So go back to the box. And what we'll do now is we're going to merge our column into the courtyard. So we go to the File menu, select Merge. We'll need to find where we placed the Dora column. Again, in the Startup Files. Click Open. There's a few objects here, and um, we uh, haven't named these properly. So um, now, just by experience, uh, we can tell here that, uh, or I can tell, that the tape is nothing that we really need. Uh, the plane is that original object we use as a reference plane where we pasted the image on, and the line is actually the, the Dora column. What we should have done before exiting the Dora column max file was actually name that object, but we didn't. So we can go back and do that again later. Here it's uh, telling us that uh, there is actually a line 01 object in this scene, which uh, actually is the profile of the roof. So let's go ahead here and uh, take the opportunity to give this now proper name and click on merge. And at the same time, let's take the opportunity to select this uh, line 01, the other one, and give it a name as well. So you could see our column here. It's come into the scene. It should come into the scene at exactly the location it was created. And you can see here it is in the center of the, um, the courtyard, and it is right on the ground. Uh, we'll need to move it, obviously. It doesn't need to go there. So let's uh, go ahead and unhide all our objects, though. We'll just take a minute here and go through our scene and see if all the objects are named so that we can tell what their usage is for. And everything seems to be pretty good here. Okay. Let's um, use the top viewport to move this column into a location here in the lower left-hand corner. And um, we don't need to get too precise here, although simply by eyeballing we can get quite precise. And I'm using my move gizmo again here to my advantage. Now, since we've used uh, Booleans in the past, this might be an opportunity to use Booleans again, where you can see that our column is going into our wall. Basically, this part here is the part of the column that uh, is, uh, is seen in the courtyard, and then you wouldn't see the rest, which is uh, beyond the wall here. Although this is a possibility, there's no real good reason why we need to do that. Uh, what we'll do is we'll actually take um, a tool right here in the lathe uh, tool where we can specify the number of degrees that uh, the object is being lathed. Um, one thing as well is uh, instead of using 30 segments, I think uh, 36 segments is better. And the reason why that, that is is that we will actually get a line and a vertex both on uh, on each of the uh, 0 and 90 degree angles here. So let's, um, well what we will do here is uh, actually instead of using a full 360 degrees now we're going to switch this to 90. 
and you could see that when you do that it uh, uses that front view counterclockwise and it just so happens that it's worked out really nicely here that it uh, yeah, has aligned uh, perfectly uh, with my two walls. Uh, we can also see though that uh, it's used the full 36 segments which is no longer necessary so we'll switch this now down to 9 where it was before. So let's go ahead and uh, zoom out and we'll make some uh, some duplicates of this object and we can do this uh, in a number of different ways. Um, let's try starting with, uh, with Array. We'll go to the uh, Tools menu, find Array, and let's just start by just making three copies. And um, we'd like to copy this along the x-axis. The distance between copies is 360 or 12 feet and let's go ahead and preview that and that's what it gives us for now that's good click on OK and we'll go in here and now make adjustments to these two columns Oh, now once again made the error of creating instances so I'll go back to the original object here and uh, again go to the modify panel and click on make unique and now I'll set that back to where it should have been and these two these two are actually still instanced that's kind of a good thing because when we switch this number of segments it'll switch on both of them oops not 180 18 now once these original three columns are placed I'm gonna go ahead and select them again and mirror them to the other side of the courtyard click on select from scene button and here you'll see that our three columns are located here and you can see that they're numbered so this now selects the three of them we're going to uh, go to the tools menu and select mirror make sure the mirror axis is set to X and the instance clone selection is on in this case here our offset distance is 1070 which I believe is equal to 35 feet 8 inches so we'll click on OK now you can clone one of these let's uh, choose this one the second uh, column Let's clone that into uh, in its position and clone it as a copy and then right click on the transfer type in and we'll move that cloned column up 360 or 12 feet. Now Again, it's a half column, so we need to adjust some of the lathe parameters. So 360 degrees, and also we want its segments to be 36. Using various methods uh, like uh, uh, cloning and moving, uh, using arrays, I think uh, you should be able to uh, to finish off uh, this uh, placement of columns uh, in the courtyard. So I'll leave you uh, to do that task on your own. I'll come back and 
show you the end result. So here's how your model should look like now that you've uh, laid out your columns. You should see them uh, in each location and uh, uh, either a quarter or half or a full column here. So let's go ahead and uh, see our 3D view. And you can see here how, uh, how things have, uh, have turned out. Everything looks pretty good. Uh, and our columns are uh, properly placed uh, on, our, on the ground and go up to the 8 foot high or uh, 240 uh, centimeter level. And um, our, our columns are, are cleanly defined. Uh, uh, you don't see any facets and uh, nasty edges. So this is basically our model of the interior of our courtyard. Um, we'll come back to this, um, I hope, later on in the class uh, to do some other things. Um, and one thing to note also about it is um, it's, uh, it's an interior shot. Um, I haven't done any, anything on the walls here. Uh, I haven't created a model of this entire building. Um, it's very possible here that we're going to have uh, windows or even a colonnade above. Uh, this is something that you could experiment with if you like, um, you know, in addition to uh, uh, the work that uh, I'm going to assign uh, after this, uh, the next uh, presentation. So um, if you get some extra time, go ahead and, uh, you know, use some of the techniques we've learned here to either create a, a second story colonnade. Uh, that'll be somewhat a little bit different than the first story one. And um, as well, um, um, you know, dress it up and have fun with it a bit. Of course, if you, you know, start creating openings in the second floor, you're going to also need a back wall. Um, so you can see that uh, nothing here really has been modeled that uh, we don't really require. Um, only the things that we see in the scene. Uh, even you know, the, the roof here is kind of uh, superfluous. We don't really need to have it. Uh, but uh, anyway, it uh, was quite simple to model and it doesn't take a lot of, uh, a lot of faces. So that, um, that terminates the first uh, tutorial. Uh, if you haven't been following this tutorial, go back and create the scene as, we, uh, as I've laid it out for you now.